G'day, Andrew here again from Guitar Street. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of the Tone Library. This is technically the third episode because it's the third episode I'm gonna publish, but there are two other episodes in the works. I did hope to bring you the Bernie VH1, uh, second generation uh, VH1, before I brought you this, and also the Godo FVH1001. I'm just waiting for a mate of mine to finish a tone test on his own rig with those pickups, and I'll get those episodes through to you as soon as I can. If this is your first time watching the Tone Library, welcome. Um, and a bit of an explanation, it's not a pickup shootout. This is an experiment. Basically, I'm buying as many vintage humbuckers, uh, mostly Japanese, uh, as I can, and I'm dropping them into the mule to see how they sound and see what kind of tones I can get out of them. I like to document uh, the history of the pickups as well, or at least the guitars that they came in um, while I'm doing the tone test. I'm controlling as many variables as I can to make sure that any changes in the tone are actually the pickups themselves. I'm also wrangling in much better guitarists than myself to help out because I want to see what these pickups sound like in their rigs as well as mine. As always, I'm running through a positive grid spark amp with four presets that never change. There's a ZZ Top kind of thing, an ACDC style, something a bit thrashy, and a mega gain zone. The Mule is a 1978 Greco EG500 with a 50 style wiring harness. This episode, I'm gonna have a look at one of Yamaha's first ever attempts at a hot humbucker. Well, <laughs> I mean, relatively hot. By today's standards, it's pretty lukewarm. Um, it was from the SG70, and we're going to get into how Carlos Santana fits into this in just a minute. If you want to support what I'm doing, please visit guitarstreet.co. I've got a range of merch up there at the moment, and I've just released a t-shirt for the Yamaha SG, specifically the Yamaha SG70 humbucker. Sales help pay for the pickups I'm documenting. So if you like what I'm doing, please support me by visiting guitarstreet.co, purchasing a t-shirt, or even just following me on my Instagram, at guitarstreet.co. All right, let's start with a bit of history. The 70s was the golden era for Japanese guitar making. <laughs> Some call it the lawsuit era because of the number of copies that they were pumping out. I'm not touching that one with a barge pole, please don't hit me up in the comments about the misuse of the lawsuit era. While brands like Greco and Ibanez were busy blatantly ripping off Gibson and Fender, Yamaha took a massive step forward. In 1973, Yamaha debuted a bolt-on version of the SG30 and SG35. A little later came the set neck versions like the SG50. The SG70, was very similar to the SG50, but it had a mahogany body, and it also had one of Yamaha's first ever hot humbuckers, which we're gonna to test today. It's fair to say that momentum really swelled around Yamaha's SG models a year after its initial release when they put out the 90 and the 175. Incidentally, this is where Santana comes in. I'm not a Yamaha or a Santana historian, so anything I get wrong in the next few paragraphs, please let me know, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong. But from my online research, what I've been able to figure out is that Yamaha sent Carlos an SG-175. He apparently liked the look of them. Um, he was pretty keen. They wanted an endorsement deal, so they sent him one. Now he wasn't that impressed with the way the guitar felt and he came back with a list of changes and to their credit, Yamaha went full tilt into changing the guitar and building it around Santana. At the end of the day, Santana wanted more resonance uh, from Yamaha's SG. All of the changes he'd made apart from a couple of aesthetic ones were all about trying to get that thing to sing. Um, and it wasn't until Yamaha came back with the OPG-1 pickups, uh, which sported Allen Co. 5 magnets, that he was happy. So that makes these SG-70s 
um, pretty much the pickups that Santana rejected, which is why I'm really keen to test them out. You know, there wasn't much development time between the SG30 through to the SG175. It was just one year. The SG70 was their first hot pickup. And the SG-175, from what I understand, was basically the same pickup. So I'm really keen to test this out. These ones are stamped late 1974. And that means that these pickups were produced at the end of the same year that the SG-75 was made, which was then sent to Santana. Now the guts of these pickups are a bit of a mystery. So if you know what they are, please let me know. Um, I've been through so many different online resources. I've reached out to people who run Facebook groups for the SG. I've reached out to Yamaha historians, etc. And I still can't get an answer as to whether or not these were actually Alonco magnets. I understand that the OPG1 were Alonco 5, um, but a lot of people have told me that these uh, possibly ceramic, which is how they got the slightly hotter pickups. So if you know what the construction of these pickups are, please let me know in the comments and we'll be able to solve that mystery. According to the Vintage Japan Guitar site, they should be Allen Code magnets. These ones measure just on 7.95. They're uncovered now and don't appear to ever have been wax potted in their lifetime. I've got to say, I love the chunky Phillips head pole pieces. They're just so cool. This one actually came in a pair with the original harness. The pickup lead had been sticky taped together, so I sold it on a new lead. Now, in case you're wondering, I am going to be using these pickups. I'm going to drop the whole harness into an old Yamaha SA50, which I'm rescuing at the moment. So stay tuned, there will be a rescue video and I'm gonna get a really good jazz guitarist to give them a tone test in that rig. <laughs> All right, let's have a listen to how these things sound in my rig. Don't forget to stay tuned for the tone test with a much better guitarist and a hollow body. Um, and don't forget, if you wanna support me, please hit subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at guitarstreet.co or visit guitarstreet.co and purchase a t-shirt. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you next time. Cheers.